Do you remember the massive sadness of Dreamfall The Longest Journey? Do you remember April Ryan? Dreamfall Chapters continues the story right in your face as we have to witness the funeral of our beloved April. They say that every story has a beginning and an end. But that isn't always the case. Some stories simply stop. My name is Zoe Castillo. I'm dying. I've been in a coma for over a year. The doctors don't believe I'll ever wake up again. As it turned out, Helena Chang was not only the mother of Faith, but also the mother of Zoe. Helena tried to kill both her daughters to keep her criminal activities secret. It worked. The world is addicted to dreams. To dream time. It's just... entertainment. They have no idea what the dream machine is really for and what it's doing to the world. They don't know that someone is stealing their dreams, using them to reshape reality. So, if I'm in a coma, how am I talking to you? The thing is, my body may be here in a hospital, but my mind... My mind is elsewhere. This is the story time. It's the place between. And it's my home now. This place where all stories begin and end, including mine. We've already learned that Zoe is special when it comes to dreams. Now that she's in a coma, Zoe is forced to unleash her powers. She's able to reshape dreams. Not just her own, but the dreams of all people. Since the dream machine is on the market, there are more dreams out there to reshape than ever before. Somehow, Zoe's actions also have an impact on reality. While in a coma, she had enough time to strengthen her reshaping abilities. Now, she decides to take her fate in her own hands and to reshape reality. It looks like she managed to influence her medical equipment to finally wake up. My name is Zoe Castillo. And I'm alive. Before we continue Zoe's story, let's see what's going on in Acadia. In the previous game, we were introduced to Kian Albana, the ex Asadi Nazi who found out that Nazis are bad and therefore turned his back on them. Hence, he was sentenced to death by those Nazis whom he had served his whole life. Despite the fact that the death of April Ryan is a result of his reckless actions, he technically counts as a rebel now. Since his fellow insurgents of the resistance need a new strong leader, they start an attempt to free him. They manage to fight their way up to the roof. The prison only ensures that there's no magic inside. Outside, the spell doesn't hold. Yet wounded, Kian is able to escape through a magical portal. After he recovered from his injuries, he starts to help the rebellion grow stronger. Anna, a secret admirer of Kian, provides precious intel about the Asadi in Makiria. Anna was saved by Kian from sexual harassment of other Asadi Nazis when she was a child. Since then, she's in love with him. Obviously, Kian likes Anna, but he doesn't return the affection the same way, since he is gay. And I am gay. I don't mate with women. But she's pretty. Anna, I mean. Beautiful hair, striking freckles, nice scowl. She'd make a fine uh, companion. I'm not interested. Oh, okay. So, uh, is there anyone at all that you're... Yeah, no. I'm not interested in women. You're not interested in... <gasps> sure! Oh, I knew that. <laughs> of course, that's, that's fine. With Anna's information, Kian is able to handcuff and blackmail a soldier to find out about further genocide missions of the Asadi Nazis. 
magical species are sent to Nazi concentration camps where they are eventually killed after used for forced labor or for nasty medical experiments. This camp is a research facility, Kian, not a prison, not a death camp. We're doing very important work. In the last five years, we've made so much progress. We're closer than ever before to producing the cure. What cure? The cure. For magic, of course. We're creating a scourge to wash the world clean. When we unleash our holy plague, it will spread like wildfire across all continents. Humans will be perfectly safe, of course, but magicals, they will die. Every single one of them. You're insane. No, no, it's perfectly safe. We're doing science here, not black magic. This is madness. You're evil. What you're doing here is evil. You're right, Kian. This is f***ed up. This is indeed a one-to-one -one copy of the actual Nazi regime. Instead of Jews, the Holocaust is performed on magicals here. Fortunately, Kian manages to defeat the insane Nazi butcher and to free all imprisoned magicals. Uh, you'll pay for this, Kian! You'll pay for this! To understand the upcoming events in Acadia, we have to go back to Stark and follow the steps of Zoe Castillo. After her apparent awakening, she is taking therapy sessions to remember. She forgot almost everything that happened after she infiltrated Vortikov. She can't even remember her recently mastered dreamery shaping abilities. Zoe moved to Europolis after she decided to date her ex-boyfriend Reza again. Working as a neural programmer, she seems to have adapted to her new usual everyday life. Are you my new human? Nope, we're just going to work together today. I'm not sure I'm comfortable with that. I'm not sure that matters. Are you hygienic? You look a bit unhygienic. Seriously? Anyhow, her dreams are still out and try to revive her memories. I am Abnaxus of the Venar. Another dreamer? Wait, that, that wasn't real. That was... that was just another dream. Yes. And also much more. We needed you to come. You came. You will come here to help Lux. Everything depends on this. Everything that was, is, and will be. After getting hurt in an explosion, Zoe had enough time to use the dream machine again while recovering. Soon, she starts to remember about Acadia. She also started to get involved into politics. However, because of her curiosity, she finds out that Vortikop is corrupting all political parties and basically controls all political decisions. Obviously, Warty doesn't like those discoveries and therefore tries to get rid of Zoe. Hannah and her girlfriend Abby keep Zoe safe in underground tunnels. Zoe met Hannah during her political campaign and found out that they share similar dreams. Apparently, Hannah is also a dreamer. They manage to get hold on an unlicensed dream machine so that Zoe can enter her dreams without Watikorp finding her location. What the mother Jordan what? Uh, where'd she go? Strangely, Zoe completely teleported to Acadia. This is a major hint for the plot twist. But we are still far away from that, so hold on tight. In Acadia, we immediately meet Crow, who of course becomes our sidekick again. How do you know about my dream? It was my dream too. You're invading my dreams now? Oh, oh god of ravens, I hope you didn't see the one with the chickens and uh... <clears throat> <clears throat> Did Abnaxus say anything more after I left? The lumpy fella who looks like he's been repeatedly beaten with an enormous ugly stick? Yes, he did. To be honest, I can't follow what he says half the time, but it was something to the effect of... Bring her here. You will have brought her here. You will bring her here. You had have will be... etc, etc, etc. In her previous short visions about Acadia, Zoe met Abnaxus, who told her to get the Soul Stone from the Yaga. Whatever that means. He also told her to come to the Purple Mountains as soon as possible to join with Lux. He explained that Lux is the first dreamer and that if he dies, the universe, all dreams, all realities, everything will cease to exist. 
Apparently, he is some kind of god. So, just to put that right, the place called Storytime seemingly is the realm of gods. That's why Zoe was able to not only reshape dreams, but also influence reality in there. In Abnax's old house and with the help of Brian Westhaus, we find a map to the Purple Mountains. On our way, we stumble across Ben Bandu. He is one of the last mole persons. The Asadi killed almost a whole race. Anyway, Ben Bandu shows Zoe where to find the Yaga. If we don't get the soul stone... Everyone dies, the world ends, no more Christmases, blah blah blah. I'm so sick of walking into one perilous scenario after the other. Somehow, Zoe manages to find a way inside the Yaga's house, which is some kind of monster. You see, in Slavic folklore, Baba Yaga is a witch consisting of three sisters. No monkey has ever been here before. We're curious about you. We? The sisters. Bayab Aya. Bayab Aya. Baba Yaga. The Yaga fears that she will be forgotten if Lux, the god, has his powers back. We were there when Lux dreamed the first dream and the stars were born and everything came apart. If we give you the stone, we fade from memory. We will be forgotten. It's all that anchors us when there's no one left to worship and fear us. But they do worship you, don't they? In the city, they've built effigies to the Wicker Witch. The Wicker Witch! A bedtime story, a spineless fairy tale for nestlings. No one truly fears the Yaga anymore. Our power is diminished. I don't know. People need darkness. They need to be frightened. In my world, scary is popular. There are films, games, haunted houses. Since Zoe is supposed to join with the god, she promises that Baba Yaga will be remembered. You must remember us when the dream is in you. The world needs us. Without the sisters, without the Yaga, there is no fear, no imagination. Every dream needs a nightmare. I don't think I could forget, even if I tried. Yes, I'll remember you. With the soul stone in our pocket, we make our way to the Purple Mountains. After meeting Abnexus, he finally explains what is going on. The soul stone is Lux's heart. As Zoe rejoins the soul stone with Lux, she is asked to become one with the god, since she is a dreamer. Technically, Zoe is a god now. She, they, can reshape dreams and reality. Are you okay, Zoe? For a moment there it looked like... It looked like you were made of light. You were incredibly beautiful. I'm... okay. Furthermore, Abnaxis tells us about the reincarnation of April Ryan. Turns out April wasn't fully human. She was half drike kin and half human. This explains why April was addressed daughter and sister by the white dragon. So April is reborn in between worlds. Gladly we are allowed to witness how April's reincarnation grows up. Her name is Saga, although she is an individual with a new personality. Saga somehow remembers the actions of her former life. Of course, since April was a shifter, Saga has those abilities as well. So far, we followed three storylines. Ki and Alvane pushing the rebellion stronger. Zoe's awakening in Stark and Pur becoming a god. As well as Saga, the teenage reincarnation of April Ryan. Now, only one piece is missing to reveal how all three fates are intertwined. Dream Machines. We already know Dream Time from Vortikorp in Stark. But there's also a comparable machinery in Acadia. Those strange steam engines which were built all over the place in Mercuria. We have already seen them in the last game, but we had no clue about their purpose. Turns out the Prophet, which is the Isadi Hitler, ordered to build those machines. 
they are all part of a distributed system which is connected to a core processing unit. It's a gigantic steampunk supercomputer. Of course, the lead engineer was no other than Roper Clacks. He had enough time to study the concepts of computing while he was trapped in a calculator. Like the Dream Core in Stark, the central processing tower in Acadia is used to channel dreams. Certain people from both worlds want to tear apart the divide. They want to play gods themselves and reshape reality. Seems like Gordon Holloway really wasn't paying attention to the balance after all. Such a bad guardian. As Kian Alvana and Crow try to destroy the central machine in Acadia, they are not careful enough. Kian is attacked by his former Asadi guardian and Crow... Crow is killed by the Prophet! No! Not again a sad ending! But hold on, there's hope! First let's reveal the Prophet's identity. He is Brian Westhouse. That f who played the nice guy was Hitler himself all along. Sneaky b He was the one who killed the white dragon and who freed Dropper Clacks just to have a henchman who can build a world reshaping calculator. Hitler Brian wants to kill all magicals because it's difficult to control chaos. He needs a world of pure logic. Unfortunately, the leader behind the curtain in Stark isn't a nice person either. It's time for the major plot twist. As Zoe joined with Lux, she woke up. Strangely, she finds herself in an underground lab of Jiva, the company of Helena Chang. Apparently, Zoe was dreaming all the time. She never woke up from her coma. It was all a dream. And not at all. This is where it gets a bit confusing. When Zoe is captured by her mother, Helena tries to explain everything. It's true that Zoe was dreaming since she was put in a coma one and a half years ago. However, the life in Europolis was real. Since Zoe can alter reality, she somehow managed to project a physical copy of her mind into reality. Somewhat similar to the last game when she had a physical copy of herself in Acadia. Apparently she can physically be at multiple locations. Furthermore, we learned that Zoe was made. She is an experiment of Jiva just like Faith. Zoe was the first one though. The first made dreamer. Hannah who helped us in Europolis was the last experiment. Like Brian Westhouse and Acadia, Zoe's mother modified Vorticorp's dream core such that she can channel dreams to unleash massive amounts of energy. Like Hitler Brian. She wants to use Zoe to play God and reshape the world. There's a place we go when we dream. Story time. Different cultures have different names for it. The Aranda people of Australia call it dream time. Think of it as the initial state of all matter and energy in every possible universe. The blueprint. All realities originated in this initial state and they remain entangled, evolving one universe affecting another. Wave energies are fueled by dreams. Particles in our world are entangled with particles in Arcadia because they were created together in story time. Eingana has the power to change the wave field and thus the observable universe through dreams. Again, this seems like the bad persons are winning once again. But as I said before, there is hope. Just remember that Zoe is technically a god now. So she is able to reshape the world. She needs neither massive amounts of energy nor wave fields to use her powers. She is a goddamn god. As she and her father detain Helena, Saga comes into play. She heals Kian with a magic potion and opens a shift from Acadia to Stark. I'm trying to focus. Hey. Hey? Nice outfit. Uh, thanks. I'm Saga. I'm Zoe. But you know that. With the portal, Zoe can explain Kian how to kill the Prophet and how to destroy the steampunk computer by injecting a virus which simply overheats the engine. To defeat Brian Westhouse, the so-called undreaming has to be unleashed. 
Hitler Brian was possessed by the Undreaming, the counterpart of Lux, which gave him his powers. Since the Undreaming controlled Brian Westhouse rather than the other way round, he bound it to a piece of soul stone which he gave Roper Clax. Clax was here. I punched him, but he got away. Someone survived being punched by you. I held back. He called himself an engineer. So the truck Kian sneaks to the Prophet and Clax, who are distracted by their apparent victory. Their careless victory party was their biggest weakness. Hence, Kian could easily destroy the Soul Stone and kill Roper Clax. With the undreaming back inside Hitler Brian, he manages to teleport to Stark. Time to play with the Force. So he uses her actual Jedi powers to kill Brian and to contain the undreaming. Let her go. This is the point where the game manages to accomplish what Star Wars never was capable of. To rejoin the good side and the dark side of the Force. Like Baba Yaga already explained, if there is light, there must be darkness. Otherwise he would lack opportunities and creativity. There must be balance. At least that was the whole theme of the very first game. Zoe, in other words, looks decides to rejoin with the undreaming to finally restore balance. They don't understand that there needs to be balance in all things. Life and death. Light and darkness. Creation, destruction. Dream and undream. All things in balance. This means that all leading bad guys are defeated this time. But Saga explains that the war is not over yet. Therefore the rebellion should prepare to grow even stronger. You showed up with the medicine I needed. Did anyone send you- It'll take a while to explain. We can cover it on the road to Sadir. Sadir? Capital of the Azadi Empire? Situated where the six rivers meet the- Stop playing games, woman. I'm coming with you. I... what? Why? Because that's how the story goes. It's been written, and we can't change that now. We have a war to win. And then, in another decade or so, there's going to be an even bigger war. You'll definitely need me for that one. Us. You'll need us. It's been foretold, Bloodless King. For thousands of years. Seriously, I promise I'll cover all of it when we have some quality time to ourselves. Oh, and... and one last thing. You may not like this one... yet. You're going to... uh... to adopt me. Adopt? What? I'll need a name, in Azadir, a surname, otherwise I won't be useful to you. No one listens to a nameless person, and... it's not like we can just get married. So you adopt me and bring me into your family, and I take your name and become a princess. Saga Alvane. I like the sound of that. I've never had a surname. We didn't need one. What are you talking about? Again, I'll explain soon as we leave. And we should leave soon. Because Sadir needs you. I... Got it. Yes. Yes. To Sadir. But unless you explain everything, everything, I'll toss you overboard before we're halfway there. Understood? I can live with that. Good. Adopt. Mm-hmm. Also, how did you get here? How did you know I was in the Enclave? What was that portal? Can you 
open portals anywhere? Why not Everything. just... Everything. I pinky promise. <sighs> Light save me. As Saga foretold, Kian became the king of Azadir. And before I forget, Saga managed to make a reincarnation of Crow. Baby Crow! Back to Zoe and Stark. She is sick of dreaming. The god decides to live in Casablanca with Reza. The final chapter shows Saga Alvane when she already grew to an old granny. Former baby crow also aged like her. Saga still remembers April Ryan. She explains that the divide was torn apart and that she traveled to many multiverses, not just Acadia and Star. The game ends with Lady Alvane welcoming April Ryan. This is the scene from the very first game when April tried to escape the vanguard and ended up at Lady Alvane's interdimensional house for very few minutes. Lady Alvane was also the narrator of the first game. At first this is a bit confusing, but you see, the interdimensional house of Saga isn't bound to time, since it's interdimensional. Since Saga is the reincarnation of April, this seems like a loop. So, the longest journey of April, i.e. Saga, never ends. It's an infinite loop. After the sad ending of Dreamfall, the longest journey, we now have a final epic game with the good guys winning. I didn't expect the three games to have such an intertwined story. What do you think of the trilogy? Do you think the ending is honorable? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you like my content, please share and subscribe.